to yet another very beautiful and interesting episode of Healthy Living reaching you from the nation's capital Abuja. I am Olamide Al Hassan. Now, chronic disease has been proved to be the sixth major cause of death globally, with over 20 million people diagnosed with different stages of kidney diseases in Nigeria. This kidney disease is majorly found in people of varying ages. Before now, it was discovered that people from age 40 and above. But currently, it's in varying ages. Now, kidney diseases are usually life-threatening and requires dialysis to keep alive or a kidney transplant by a donor who can be allies, associates, or even relatives of the patient. Kidney donors are those who are regarded as living kidney donors and can be from ages 18 and above. On this episode of Healthy Living, we'll discuss the process of kidney donation with the first ever living kidney donor in southeastern part of Nigeria, Mr. Joseph Kalu Uma. He joins us shortly. Thank you, Mr. Uma. Thank you very much. Um, it's so good to have you today because it's more like this is the first time I'm having a personal meeting with um, a living kidney donor. All right. So could you please tell us a bit about yourself and who you made your donations to? Okay. My name is Joseph Kaloma, a native of Ebema, Ohafia. Okay. Ohafia in Abia State. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm 63 years by, by, by age. All right. Um, right now, I'm a senior citizen of Nigeria. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was working with a National Universities Commission, Abuja here. Okay. Um, then um, I donated my kidney to my little nephew. Oh. By name, Nana Ule Oji. How old is um, that your nephew as at the time? How old was your nephew as at the time you made the donation? And how old were you? Um, I was, uh, this is uh, 2003. 2023. Sorry, 2023, yes. Yes, sir. And the uh, surgery was done in 2017. Mm. Okay, that was six years ago. Yes, six years ago. That's to say I was um, 50... You were 57. 57 or thereabouts. Yes. Yeah, I was 57. Why he was um, uh, 35. Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at the disparity in age. That has nothing to do when it comes to some of these organ donations. No, 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 no. Provided the donor eh, is okay health-wise, you can donate to anybody. Okay. So what yeah. were the evaluation process like before you made the donation? Were you evaluated in any way? before you had to now donate your kidney sure okay sure you know when it comes to donation of a kidney it's a very rigorous process tell us about it good one two of you must be of the same genotype the same blood group wow a will donate to a group B will donate to B group. You know, positive is a general uh, uh, group. It can donate to anybody. And two of us are in the same uh, group. That's uh, the O positive. So that is number one basic point. If two of you are not in the same uh, genotype, you can never walk. That's number one. Then there are other processes. Like in my own case, I went through about 20 or 25 processes. Wow. Yes. In fact, if you come across the book I wrote, that's priceless. That book is like a touchlight to, to whoever intends to donate a kidney or those who have already donated their own kidney because it was a verbatim of my experience okay. on the donation. That's why I really encourage 
anybody to read that book. Okay. Priceless. All right. So it's, it's very important. The processes you went through. Yeah. Could you please take us through some of them so that viewers understand what it means to go through um, kidney donation? Okay. I've mentioned your genotype. Yes, blood group. Good. The blood group. Then um, they have to check your heart. Mm -hmm. Check your heart. Check. There are some instruments using checking right inside your internal organ. Mm. Know the particular tick as we are as we are having two kidneys. Yes. You only make use of one. Why the other one will be like a spare tire? Hmm. You see. So you mean that in every human we we have two functional kidneys. Sure. So it's just one that is doing the job, and the and other is just like a backup. That is it. You may not know. Okay. But there are some people who are born with only one kidney. Born with just one kidney. Yes. But very rare occasion. Very rare. Okay. The only thing is that since you may not know you are inside. You may not know whether you are having two or whether you are having one. But I'm sure there, there, there are tests that can be done to, sure, be, to sure. ascertain that. Exactly. There is. Okay. There is a test to ascertain uh, whether you are having two or one. Okay. Even if you are having the two, the particular one you are using. Okay. So the spare one or the backup one is the one that will be given to the recipient. Sure. Mm. Right now, two of you can share the kidneys. Okay. Mm. So, what other processes you go through besides the heart test, the um, genotype, the blood mm -hmm. group test? What other processes did you have to go through? There is a, this other one. There is an instrument. Um, color something. You have to insert into your anus. Wow. And that thing will go right inside your stomach. And there is a camera at the peak of that instrument. Mm. They use that instrument to beam all your internal organs. Mm. You will be watching it in the screen. The essence is to make sure that there is no growth inside you. You do not know. Mm. Right? Yes. Because uh, it will not be good. You are having either an infection or uh, there is a growth in you which will invariably be transferred to the recipient. Mm -hmm. So the essence of that uh, process is to make sure that you are free from any type of growth inside you. Mm -hmm. And mind you, that particular process is very, very painful. My thoughts too. Yes. Imagine uh, a pipe of about four feet or thereabout, you know, injected into your stomach, as it is going to be coiling right mm. inside your stomach, right inside your stomach. It will be as if your stomach is filled up. I will not lie you, it's very, very painful. I'm wondering how you went through that. Yes. So another question I'm going to be asking you is, okay. besides these processes you went through, these um, preparation steps for the donation were you also emotionally prepared and mentally prepared for the process sure i was 100 percent. okay did mm. you get when i mean and um, prepared like did the hospital prepare you for this journey in the sense of your mental state and your emotional state yes okay. um you know this thing is step by stage mm. you have a uh, uh counseling Okay. So the, the duty of the uh, counselors is to, you know, uh, put your mind, put your mind what is before you. Hmm. You understand? Very well. First and foremost, they want to know whether you are doing this involuntarily or whether you are induced or whether you are suffering from any mental uh, uh, I mean, um, disability, okay. uh -huh. or that influence of anything. You know, you are response to them. 
Remember, they are professionals. Very well. Yes. So as you are talking to them, eh, they are taking note of whatever you are saying. If at the end of that exercise, they are convinced that, yes, you are doing this thing willingly. Mm. You know, um, I will say it, that, uh, you know, some people say they are, uh, um, they are kidney. Yes, Those helps. people will call them kidney merchants. Mm. We call them kidney merchants. They may not go through all these processes. They are only just to, you bargain, they remove the kidney, that's all. We who are now giving to a loved one, you have to go through these rigid processes. Because the doctor will not want a situation whereby after giving your kidney, the recipient will leave. You who is the donor yes, will die. Exactly. No, 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 no. That is not their plan. Their plan is to make sure that you who is the donor, you leave while the recipient will also leave. Okay, so this process now yeah. that you have to go through, even though they actually get to talk to you emotionally, they prepare you emotionally and mentally, are there f were there fears for you before you went through this process? Especially looking at your age at that time, Okay. 57, yes. you could look at yourself and say, is this not, does it not pose a higher risk for you to have, you know, donated your kidney at that age? Um... Let me give you one scenario. Okay. You are a woman. Good. You will take him now. During labor, you pass through, I mean, uh, extensive uh, pain. Will you say because of that pain, you will not take him again? Obvious. You will not say that. So, it's the same thing with giving her to a donor, I mean, giving her to a kidney. Because you know the purpose and the end effect. The best thing you do is to set aside your own personal feelings. Because at that moment, you are still better than somebody who is having an impaired kidney. When once you have made up your mind, and you are focused every other thing will be as if they are all child's play anyway so mm. um, in the process of the donation how long did the surgery take um it took like eight to nine hours oh. it took like eight to nine hours were you conscious yes. of it to some extent at the beginning at the beginning you know um from the waiting room to pray surgery room okay then from pray surgery room to the theater itself okay so there's a waiting room yes there is a waiting room, room then, then there, there is, is a surgery room i mean pray surgery room and there is also the surgery room where you have the surgery table okay good okay. Can I get insights or can we get insight into what happens in the waiting room? Okay. In the pre-surgery room. Okay. I don't know if you have, if you were so conscious of the surgery. Sure, room. sure, sure. Okay, then please walk us through these processes. Okay. Um, at the waiting room, you stay there while other preparations are going on inside the surgery room. When once they have finished, everything is set they will now will you remember you are now on which on the wheel them um, like a stretcher okay. they now will you into the wait, waiting room eh? after making sure that everything is complete from that waiting room straight to the surgery table you'll be placed on the surgery table and be given an assessor in my own case, I recall um, immediately I was at the uh, waiting room. I, I drew the attention of the doctor that I'm pressed. 
um, that I, I would like to go and ease myself. Mm. He told me, Joseph, I should not bother. You know, that very soon everything will be over. Before I knew what was happening, I was already on the surgery table. I was given uh, an assessia. In fact, um, okay, well, at the surgery table, I was overhearing the conversation going between the doctor, um, the nurses, and every other, uh, every other person concerned with the, with the surgery. You know, they were there discussing the length, the duration of the operation. Mm. Yeah. And so on, uh, that kind of discussion to make sure that at the end of the day, the, do, uh, the, the, the operation is 100% uh, perfect, success. yes, yeah. or success, uh, successful. So I will say, um, when the anesthesia took effect, I didn't hear anything again. Hmm. So how long the, the surgery took place, I will not know. The only thing, the, the surgery started around, um, um, I think it was around 7 to, between 7 to 9 in the evening. 7 mm. to 9, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m.? Yes. Would that mean two hours? No, no, no. I mean the time okay. it started. Then till the, I only saw myself the following day wow. at the intensive care uh, mm, unit. unit. Yes. Wow. Uh, 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 uh. And um, even when I woke up, uh, to me, I just felt like I just had a snap. You understand? Mm -hmm. I couldn't recall that something like that had, had happened. Mm. I just took it that somebody who, uh, you know, just let off. Uh, I, ju I just took it like that. Meanwhile, remember before the surgery, I complained that... Um, you were pressed. I was pressed. I was going to ask you about that. Yes. So, I now told the, uh, the nurses that I want to go and ease myself. You know? They said, okay, no problem. They brought a pool for me. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to use that thing. I want to go to the restroom rest and do it myself. In fact, they were shocked. I told them you shouldn't bother. I am fit. I am completely fit. <laughs> you know, they were all taken aback. You know, I got up from the bed, went into the restroom, is myself. You know, it was at that point I now notice that there is a lateral uh, plaster on my tummy. And I also noticed that I couldn't bend, you know, easily. Mm. You know? So when I just managed to look down and saw the lateral plastic on my stomach, it was then, it, it uh, I mean, uh, occurred to me that, yes, something really took place which I was not conscious of, hmm. you know. Thereabouts, I was taken to the ward for proper uh, attention. That was, um, um, you know, like the processes, we couldn't complete it. Can we go back? Of course, of course. Good. Um, one, there is one, they have to know the, your heartbeat, whether your uh, heart will be strong enough to withstand, to withstand whatever, is, uh, whatever is going to be done. Yeah. That one is like um, this photocopy machine is in that shape. They will place you on top of a, a stretcher. That stretcher will carry you inside. It's almost like an oven. Mm. 
Yes. The mm. ones they use for MRI scans. Oh, that, that is it. So, meanwhile, it is being timed. It is being timed like either five to ten seconds, as the case may be. If your heart cannot withstand it, the machine will, you know, switch off by itself. Hmm. But if your heart can withstand it, it will go through the normal process. After then, it will bring, a, bring you up from the other end. That is part of the processes. Mm -hmm. Then, there is one, you'll be given a container. Okay. Yeah. That, that container, you'll be urinating inside it. Mm? It is to know the quantity of urine you are able to produce. In a day? In a day. All of these are pre-processes. They are all pre-processes. Okay. Mm. So, anytime you want to urinate, you urinate inside that uh, container. At the end of the day, they will measure the quantity to know whether your kidney is producing enough urine. If it is not, the operation can be cut off. Mm. Because everything is done to perfection. Certainly true. Yes, everything is done to perfection. There is no shortcut in the whole thing. Um, the final one is what we call tissue typing. This tissue typing, they have to take sample of your blo uh, blood. Uh, and it is, as at that time, there is no way they were doing it in Nigeria. It was done abroad. Okay. Done in U.S. Okay. It is there, they are going to match my own blood with my recipient. If two of them uh, matches, which means I can donate. Hmm. But if it's not, the, the whole thing will be called off. In fact, it is at that stage, the result of that tissue matching will tell whether the operation will go on or not. Wow. It is the final stage that it has to do with you as a person. Thereafter, a meeting of the surgeon and every other person involved eh, in the surgery will be called. They will now gather together to review everything. They will now decide whether I am fit to donate my kidney. Meanwhile, there is even uh, a process whereby uh, a, a nutrition eh, you will be subject, subjected to you know a legion of questions one uh, what you eat um, uh, the, the essence of that aspect is to establish whether you are addicted to either a particular drug mm. or whatever and you know you know some people are addicted to drug or to alcoholic so it is then the, the nutrition will be able to establish whether you are addicted to any a, any drug in particular All right. uh, either alcoholic or whatever um in my own case i was very very fortunate because um i wasn't addicted to any particular drug okay even an uh, alcoholic i wasn't so on that aspect i was 100 percent uh, okay i was 100 percent okay then um like i said before all these processes are done to make sure that the ethical aspect of the process is maintained okay yeah
All right, let's quickly go on a break. Okay. When we return, the discussion will continue. Yeah. All right, viewers, I'm sure you're learning something. Let's go on a quick break. When we return, Mr. Uma will still be, will still be in the studio educating us. We're watching Healthy Living, reaching you from the nation's capital, Abuja. We've been talking to Mr. Joseph Uma, a living kidney donor. All right, before we went on the break, you were giving us details of the process you had to go through. And from what you're explaining, I can see that it takes more than a day you can't just wake up today and decide to go donate your kidney true or false yeah um like in our own case it took uh exactly two months to donate a kidney two yes. months two months it took two months can to go through the process will the recipient still be able to wait around for two months yes because okay. he will be on dialysis wow you understand he will be on dialysis. You know, to, to, to donate kidney is not just something you do overnight. Hmm. It's not. So, it is to make sure that at the end of the day, you achieve what you want to achieve. Um, like I said before, there are about uh, 21 processes okay involved um one is the blood group okay this is to determine if we are uh compatible yes, yes. good then checking the health of my blood mm, this is to check if my blood is healthy enough yes uh -huh. that's part of the research for the it, blood group. exactly okay because if my blood is not enough it may not withstand True. The process. That's true. Then nice. number three, number three is uh, antigen. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, 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 this has to do with uh, making sure that uh, my um, I, I don't react to a particular thing. Okay. Okay. You know, some people react to a particular thing. Absolutely. Either yes, either a drug or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then number four is a. Uh, uh, creatinine mm. this one is a little bit complex because that test is to determine the function of your uh, kidney okay is to determine the particular one you are using okay right oh, so it's not like you just use any of your kidney no no no, 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 no. One that you use exactly. there has to be a test to be yes sure. there must be a test okay. to okay. determine the particular w one you are using out okay. of the two okay if it is the right side or the left uh, you are using which means it will be your left one that will be given out mm -hmm. then and um, number five there is something we call a uh, fasting blood glucose the blood sugar level yes this is to determine your blood sugar level okay you know if you are a patient with a, a high blood sugar level is is almost like a death sentence to so cut you open exactly you won't heal you you will die definitely die so that is is to determine that one then there is another one the call renal function test hmm. this one will determine um you know it will determine one the length of your kidney okay the cord attached to it right mm -hmm. whether it will be sufficient for the recipient for, yes for the recipient after removing harvesting my own kidney whether it will be enough to be attached to the recipient um then there is another one urine test urinalysis okay this one will determine the quantity of Urine, uh, urine daily. you can take you can uh, produce in a day yes you said that earlier yes then there is another one called a cardiac check mm -hmm. this one will determine the function of your heart yes something uh, like what you did in you are, you, whether you are having bp yes something like that so, yes. uh -huh. then there is one we call pulmonary check okay mm -hmm. w this one will determine the functions of your lungs lungs yes uh -huh. w uh, uh, that is the capacity as the case may be then there is further test or check 
on your renal function. Mm. This one will determine my today, my tomorrow, and my yesteryears. Okay. Because uh, the essence of this is not that after giving, giving out my kidney tomo today, tomorrow I'll start to have my uh, I'll start to have issue with my kidney. No, 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 no. Okay. So this particular test will determine All right. whether if such thing will happen in the future. Then the ECG, mm, this one will uh, um, determine the reading of my heart. Mm. It, it was uh, that particular one I described before. Okay. It will now, yes, determine the reading of my heart. Heart, okay. Is my heart uh, beat normal? Is it abnormal? Okay. This particular test will determine it. Will determine that. Yes. Then um, there is also uh, X-ray of my chest. You know, the essence of that is to make sure that I'm not having any defect on my chest. Okay. That's the essence of that one. Then colonoscopy. Like it's, it, it's exactly that one I mentioned before, whereby that pipe is insected mm. into your anus. Yes, the uh -huh. painful process. Yes, very, very painful. This one will determine if you are having any uh, growth inside of you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If there is none, which means you are free. Then, um, angiogram, this one uh, to get closer to. At my kidney, mm. that is, this one will determine the arteries supporting my kidney. You understand? Very well. They will beam it and know whether those arteries are strong enough or not. If they are not strong enough, the operation will be called off. Called off, yes. yes. Um, like I said before, there is 24-hour urine collection to determine um, uh, the quantity of, of urine, urine that your daily. kidney can produce. Uh, let me add here. During that uh, process or testing process, I was based here at Abuja. And all these processes were taking place down south. Oh, where the surgery the took place. The surgery took place in Nigeria here. Yes, Omaha. Okay, so just let me see Omaha. Wow, the Federal Medical Center there. Yes, Omaha. Okay, so all through this, you said it takes like two months to exactly. prepare you for the surgery. That's correct. So in those two months, did you have to leave in the hospital, or did you have to go and come back as an outpatient? I was going and come back. Okay. In fact, I made like uh, I made like thirty-two trips. Wow. Abuja, Omoya, Abuja, Omoya. Oh, well, you, you had know? to keep traveling? Yes. That way. Exactly. Because I was no. working now. Okay. I can't leave my work. Certainly true. Yeah. But another question is yeah. were you not putting pressure on yourself already? You know, making those mm. trips, going and coming back, was that not an inconvenience? It was to some extent. It was to some extent. And you know, all these processes. When they have finished with one, they will go into the second one. There won't be any gap. You understand? Sure. When they have finished with one process, they will now go to the second one. And under that circumstance, they will draw my attention. Please, your attention is needed at FMC somewhere here by tomorrow. Hmm. So what I'll do by, if it is in the morning, I'll take a flight, as the case may be, straight to somewhere here. That is what was shortling happening. between those two Yeah, shortling between Mwahia and Abuja. Mm. No, so. are they, another question I would ask is, okay. is it because you were not based in the same location, that was why he took you two whole months to prepare, or it's the staple, you know, rule for donation? Yes, yes. Like I said before, there is something like cutting corners. There is mm. something like cutting corners. Everything must be done according to specification. Mm. So, so if it took two whole months to prepare for the surgery, okay, how long did it take to recover from it? 
um, like my own, if there is no complications oh, during the there surgery, can be complications, right? Yes, or after the surgery. You know, some people may be very, very unfortunate to have infection mm. mm -hmm. after the surgery. And when that happens... The infection now, is it for the living donor or the recipient? Either. Either. Okay. Yes. It can be... Infection uh, infecting the kidney or uh, infecting the wound that the has wound. been created. Yes, okay. the wound. Or even the kidney, okay. as the case may be. So, if there is no such thing, like my own, it took me 42 days, 40, no, 43 days. That's over a month. Yes, 43 days. By then, all the signs of surgery, whatever, whatever. By that 43 months, I was back on my feet, 100%. You know? Okay. Now, I'm wondering, how did you go into this? Because it's not so, such a common thing that people just wake up and decide that they want to donate their kidney. Okay. So how did you make up your mind that you're going to donate your kidney to your nephew? And how did you relate that information to your nephew saying, I'm going to be donating my kidney to you? And how did he take it? Okay. Um, way back in 2014, where my nephew had this uh, kidney problem, you know, that was around November. I now call him and say, okay, see, see, that is his nickname. You are not this thing alone. You know? That whatever it takes. Count me. In. Yeah. Count me in. Uh, to support you. That even if it entails, you know, um, giving out my heart, I was ready to do that. You know? You see, when you are having somebody who is having an impaired kidney it is only you either the family member who will understand it mm. an outsider may not know you know one the pain the frustration the person may be passing through and mind you somebody who is sick may not know the gravity of that sickness it is somebody who is looking after the person right very well. good so we who have been taking good, uh, I mean, taking care of him, the impact was more on us. Uh, and more especially my elder sister, that's a mother to my nephew. Uh -huh. The toll was too much on her. And anytime I look at her, Kai, I start to shed tears inside me. All those things, you know, was building up in me making me to be more and more determined that I have to do something. And secondly, from what the doctor told me in particular, yes. that Joseph, even if I give up my kidney, I can still live my normal life. Hmm. I can still live the number of years God has destined me to live. You understand? So with that in mind, I know that yes, even if I do this thing, I can still live my normal life. I can still live the number of years God has destined me to live. Okay. So yes. how did your immediate environment take that? Because a lot of persons tend to discourage you and uh, make sure you have cold feet towards some of those decisions, especially one that is life threatening like that. Good. Um most of these things, I kept them to myself. Really? Yes. Most of these decisions, I kept them to myself. You won't believe, my wife in particular, uh -huh, know the kind of woman I marry. You know, uh -huh, I am a God she sees. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kind of affection she has on me. Of course. Good. I know if I should reveal this thing to her, 
uh, it will be an aborted mission uh, mission even before it gets started because exactly. a lot of people are scared of donating that kidneys. Is it. So that's why i'm happy to have mm. you on the show today to express mm. more like a testimony to the fact that you know living donors are heroes actually yeah so please go ahead so i kept this in from her you won't believe it was when i reached Omoya that first day because if I go to work, 8 in the morning, by 5, you I'm supposed to be at home. So I now call her. I'm at home right here. You know, she was shocked. You are to wait. I say, I am at home right here. You know, in fact, there is one test that come up uh, in regard to Nana. But I didn't reveal anything to her. Eh? I didn't just reveal anything to her. That this is the nature of the test I want to come and take at home right here. I just told her um, there is a test they require me to come and do at home right here. It's okay. She now wished me well. It was when every other uh, test was completed and now open up to her because you may volunteer to give your kidney but along the line it may not work because the test will determine whether you are compatible or whether you are eligible to donate to a kidney so were there cold feet for you when yeah. you were lying on that um, stretcher to take you into the theater. Yeah. Did you have doubts? No. No. Okay. Never. I was already looking forward. Like I said before, a pregnant woman will definitely not have consider the, labor. Pain. Yes, consider labor pain to conceive the second time. So I was already thinking ahead. All right. Yes. So let's look at the post surgery, the okay. post kidney donation surgery. So how have you been living? Did you have to adjust your lifestyle? Did you have to stop some things I used to do? Or has it just been a very normal life for you the way you used to live it before now and now? Um, first and foremost, I wasn't living uh, life to the extreme. Okay. You understand? I wasn't living life to the extreme. What does that mean? What I mean is, I wasn't particular to drug, alcoholic, you know, all those things that will, you know, um, um, affect your health mm. or something like that. I was just living my normal life. Okay. Eating very well, right? eating very well, um, doing exercise, you know, whatever it takes. I was doing my exercise. So what I mean is that even after the surgery, I went back to my normal life. Okay. It, 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 there was no impediment in any way. Okay. There was no impediment. Do you feel some sort of discomfort from time to time, you know? Yeah. Knowing that something inside of you has been taken out. Yes. Definitely. I, I'm not superhuman. I did. For instance, the first okay, well after um I spent twelve days in the hospital. I was discharged. Flew back to Abuja. So when I got back to Abuja, by then all the injections the anesthesia and the rest of them, they have started to win out. So you understand? You so it is now I came back to realize that yes, something there was something happened. that was taken out of my blo uh, body. You know, it was at that period I started having the pain. I'm telling you, when you mention pain, it was a real pain. You know, uh, like my book. 
I was able to tell a would be donor what to do at that instance. How you can sleep, how you can get up, you know. The okay, type so you of have exercise. to adjust all those things and yes. take to some exercises. Exactly. How you can adjust. Mm. And then in all this, you make sure that you don't strain the side. The surgery took place. You know, the core tissue there. You make sure that you don't strain it. Mm. It's where you know all these things. You'll be able to know how to go about it. Mm. Yes. And then, um, like I said before, I was in excellent uh, health condition. So that alone helped me a lot to recover very fast. Okay, so um, uh, we've heard that um, right now, if you want to donate your kidney, okay. they do not necessarily have to open you up as it used to be then. Have you met living donors that don't have to have surgery scars as at recent? Yes. Okay. Because there are two types of surgery. Okay. There is the open one. Eh? There is another one. This one, as at that time, there was no hospital they were performing it. In Nigeria. In Nigeria. But I don't know now. This is 27, uh, 28, Yes, 30. I think there are now. Uh, maybe there are. That one was done abroad. In that one, they don't have to tear your body. Okay. There is this instrument. Eh? They now insert on the spot you have your kidney and they will be able to harvest it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means that one would have minimal uh, pains and probably that the recovery, and recovery process period to be faster. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. And so in rounding up now, okay. what would you advise our viewers subsequently, especially someone that is thinking to donate their kidney but they're scared of doing that? What would you advise? Um, I now want to tell the audience, there is nothing there, as a matter of fact. The fear is just because we are human. But after that, there is nothing there. You know, just be happy that through you, you were able to, I mean, lengthen the life of somebody. Because somebody with a uh, um, kidney uh, issue is already condemned to death. Mm. There is no remedy. There is no remedy. So the only remedy is if there is a transplant. And be that person who will bring that joy to, that, uh, uh, to the recipient, just like in my own case. Thank you so much, yes. Mr. Joseph Kalu Uma. We really mm. appreciate you. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Our mm. viewers, you've heard from Mr. Joseph Kalu Uma today, a living kidney donor. He's stating it clearly that living donors are living heroes. I hope you make a consideration to put a smile on somebody's face by giving them their lives back. And that's where we wrap up the show for today on Healthy Living. I'll see you again next week. I am Olamide Alhassan. Bye for now. <music>